Hello there, fellow kids. It's Craig from the Pacific War Channel. Now, if you're a longtime watcher of my content, you know three things. I love history, I have parrots, and I can't stop talking about Godzilla. Yes, I'm one of those freaks who loves Godzilla films, from the Showa days to the Rewa days. Just not that one. When I saw the trailer for Godzilla Minus Zero, I was floored. 1947, post-war Japan completely devastated. Then Godzilla attacks. Talk about adding insult to injury. It's a fascinating scenario for the franchise, and hell, it's relevant to the Pacific War. So I said, why can't I also milk this? Why can't I present an interesting idea? What would actually happen if Godzilla Minus Zero occurred? Now, I'm going to try and please my Pacific War fanbase as well as my kaiju-loving brethren, which honestly is impossible. I can say with a 99% chance, Godzilla Minus One will go like this. We will see Japan devastated after the firebombing campaigns and two nuclear bomb hits. Godzilla is created or awoken by the two atomic tests in the Marianas in 1946. Godzilla destroys the US military in and around Japan. The US military drops one or more atomic bombs on Godzilla, but it fails to kill him. Then it's up to Dr. Sirizawa who creates the oxygen destroyer and kills or forces into hibernation Godzilla. But how would this all go down in, let's say, a more realistic setting? Yes, a realistic setting involving a 200-foot monster. So just a few ground rules. No oxygen destroyer, no jet jagger, and let's just say Godzilla is not as impervious to conventional warfare as he has been for the past 70 years. Now, he's not going to be full-on Zilla getting smashed by 12 missiles from a few jets, but he has to be somewhat vulnerable to conventional weapons of 1947. It somewhat pains me to say this, but the scenario and probably that of the movie should be titled Godzilla vs. General Douglas MacArthur. Yes, the date the film chose, February the 10th of 1947, was quite specific, and it was a window of time when MacArthur controlled an incredible amount of the United States and Allied segments of the military. MacArthur was Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers. He had at his disposal the Far East Air Forces, Far East Naval Forces, the Far East Army Forces, and the British Commonwealth Occupational Force. For a time, he had control over something like seven subordinate military headquarters. Most of this gets reshuffled in 1948, which is why I think Toho decided to place the movie in February of 1947. MacArthur's territorial command spanned over the Ryukus, the Philippines, the Mariana Bonin Carolines, a few parts of China, South Korea, and of course Japan. Basically, the Asia-Pacific was his playground, and he was effectively the de facto leader of Japan from 1945 to 1948. MacArthur had at his disposal around 430,000 US forces, plus 40,000 British Commonwealth occupational forces in 1947. Technically, he could also have another 3.5 million unarmed ex-Japanese forces as well. Now let's be honest, infantry really doesn't make a difference in this kind of scenario. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. MacArthur would have on land, mostly M24s, followed less by some M4s and M26 tanks. He would also have 155mm and 240mm artillery pieces. In the air, he would have fighters like the P-51 Mustang, the F-82 Twin Mustang, and the P-80 Shooting Star. For bombers, he would have an incredible amount of B-29 Super Fortresses. Hell, the last of the 3,970 B-29s rolled off the assembly line in 1946. He might have a few A-26s as well. For the naval assets, it's a plethora of various ships, excluding battleships, mind you. By 1947, there was only a handful active as countless were being mothballed. But you know, I'm going to at least give him the Missouri. So yeah, MacArthur could rely on a dozen cruisers, carriers, a few dozen destroyers, and another few dozen submarines. Now MacArthur is facing a Godzilla on a smaller side. He's looking to be around 200 meters tall. In the trailer, we can see he takes a nuclear bomb hit, albeit not directly. Countless U.S. naval units have been destroyed in what seems to be attempts to track down and take him out. 
Godzilla is shown using his atomic breath to blast a large ship from underneath the water. So the Navy certainly would not have fun with him. And it seems impossible to concentrate forces because he's just too fast out in the ocean. So let's have this scenario play out the way it kind of looks like in the trailer. MacArthur's forces have been tracking the monster for some time, most likely after the two atomic tests in the Marianas. Conventional naval warfare is certainly not working. Godzilla is taking out warships and moving far too fast to be encircled and annihilated. Godzilla is approaching Honshu, most likely targeting Tokyo. Why? Well, it's personally to take down MacArthur, of course. As Godzilla approaches the Honshu coastline, he gradually gets up and begins to walk. In the trailer, they charted a general path Godzilla was taking, and it would be easy for MacArthur's forces to do the same. They would be able to coordinate an allied naval bombardment with a massive amount of aerial support. Destroyers, cruisers, some submarines, and maybe a battleship or two would wait for Godzilla to enter the coastal area. The US ships would be using 6 to 16 inch shells, the larger ones weighing around 2,000 to a possible 2,700 pounds, fired at a muzzle velocity of 2,500 feet a second. The Iowa class battleships were capable of firing a super heavy 2,700 pound armor piercing Mark 8 shell. Now, armor piercing shells could penetrate nearly 30 feet of concrete. Holy Look at all this damage! And the high capacity shells create a crater that's like 50 feet wide and 20 feet deep. All of my kaiju loving brethren, despite the fact Godzilla has survived nuclear blasts, other kaiju attacks, all conventional weapons, masers, hell, even a goddamn black hole. In reality, even if Godzilla was sporting, let's say, concrete or steel skin, armor-piercing shells would take chunks, if not blow his goddamn arms off. So needless to say, warships or artillery would probably kill Godzilla in a matter of minutes, if not seconds. But Godzilla would be blasting everything firing upon it with his atomic breath. So the Allied naval force would have to spread out effectively to get in as many hits as possible. Alongside this, B-29s could carry a variety of bombs to hit Godzilla. During World War II, B-29s dropped conventional bombs, incendiary bombs, mines, bunker busters, and of course, two atomic bombs. In 1947, for Godzilla, the B-29s could be outfitted with two 22,000 pound Grand Slam bombs that could penetrate around 8 feet of concrete before creating a 124 feet diameter and 34 feet deep crater. And then there's... He's dead. Now believe this one or not, because it's official. Senior Airman Mark Herman of the U.S. Air Force 18th Wing in Japan actually went on the record to say Godzilla would be, quote, killed easily with a .50 caliber machine gun from four helicopters. If that does not work, Godzilla has and needs eyes. First thing we need to do is blind it. Unguided rockets filled with white phosphorus would do the trick. If it has eyes, and they are organic, they will be toast. During World War II, white phosphorus was widely used for mortars, large munitions, and aerial bombs for a variety of purposes. It worked excellently as smokescreen, which could be used to conceal the warships, shore batteries, and tanks attacking Godzilla. White phosphorus also burns flesh down to the bone and would certainly blind and burn Godzilla. To be blunt, it looks like Godzilla stands up near the coast and is just obliterated from every angle and is unable to knock out everything before taking those lethal hits. But for the sake of argument, Let's say Godzilla's atomic breath somehow wipes the piss out of the Allied naval, land, and air power. MacArthur is freaking out. He starts talking about how he will return to Japan. He runs over to a motorboat and heads back for Australia. But not before doing the unthinkable. You knew this was coming. Bring out the memes. Toho chose 1947 for a specific reason. Dougie Boy MacArthur is in command, and like during the Korean War, he would ask President Truman for permission to use the atomic bombs. The U.S. had roughly 34 nuclear bombs in 1947, 
And in the words of MacArthur, after being fired for asking to use such weapons during the Korean War, I could have won the war in Korea in a maximum of 10 days. I would have dropped between 30 and 50 atomic bombs on his air bases and other depots strung across the neck of Manchuria. It was my plan as our amphibious forces moved south to spread behind us, from the Sea of Japan to the Yellow Sea, a belt of radioactive cobalt. It could have been spread from wagons, carts, trucks, and planes. For at least 60 years, there could have been no land invasion of Korea from the north. The enemy could not have marched across the radiated belt. You know, I'm starting to think you don't appreciate the value of a life. Ah. So this time, MacArthur says, Mr. President Truman, there's a giant 200-foot lizard. We need to use the bomb. How many does Truman let him toss at the monster? Let's say it begins with just one to see its effectiveness. Now again, us kaiju fanboys know Godzilla literally absorbs radiation. In the 1984 Godzilla movie, we saw him withstand the combined nuclear arsenal of the entire world. But in our world, could the king of the monsters survive such a blast? Similar to other conventional weapons, a single nuclear blast should tear Godzilla to pieces, and in the trailer it seems he takes a blast and it scorches him. But he lives on to keep rampaging. So it's a matter of just sending as many planes simultaneously at Godzilla as possible to cover for the one B-29 holding the nuclear device and blowing it up on Godzilla. In the end, reality would dictate the 200 foot tall lizard would take a 16 inch shell to the face and it's lights out. But I am sure the movie will have the oxygen destroyer take out the king of the monsters. Or perhaps another kaiju does the deed. Hell, there's a lot of rumors going around there's actually two Godzillas in this film. Though I don't believe that will be the case. This has just been a stupid fun episode I wanted to make. But, if you liked it, hell, let me know if you want similar things to be shown on this channel. Like alternate history kind of stuff. Maybe some stuff more grounded in reality, of course. But this has been the Pacific War Channel, over and out.